chapter 10. God's Word is medicine, as given to me by the great physician. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 22, says, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to those that find them, and health or medicine to all their flesh. God's Word ministers to the total man. His Word, Jesus, is our wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Most people have used the words of their own mouth to hold themselves in bondage. But as you begin to speak the Word of God from the heart, it will produce liberty. It will produce the health and the healing the Word says it would. Most people have spoken contrary to the Word. They have spoken things that the devil has said. They have quoted what the enemy has said about them. Therefore, they have established on earth the words the enemy has said. If we will begin to establish the things God said and establish his word on this earth, then, thank God, we will rise to a new level of faith. We will walk in the level of life where we release the ability of God by the words of our mouth. We can release the ability of God within ourselves by the words of our mouth and cause his word and his power to become available in us. Let's learn to take God's medicine daily. The confessions that I'm about to share with you came from studying the word of God and writing down the things that pertain to me as a believer. I found it in God's word, wrote it on a scratch pad, and carried it and confessed it day in and day out until it changed my life, and it'll change your life too if you'll begin to put God's Word in your mouth and say what God said about you. Gospel capsules is what we call it. To defeat worry and fear, confess these gospels three times a day. And when you do this, say it out loud where you can hear yourself say it. This is the key to forming the Word of God in your spirit and training the human spirit. I start off by praising God this way and saying it and worshiping God in these uh, confessions. I will leave off the scripture reference so it will be a continuous flow of the Word of God. You can look up the references in the book. I like personally to pray and to say these things over and over. We'll do it as though we were praying it. You can do it any way you please. Father, now I thank you that I am the body of Christ, and Satan hath no power over me, for I overcome evil with good. I am of God, and have overcome Satan, for greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your word and your spirit, Father, they comfort me. I am far from oppression. Fear does not come nigh me. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper, for my righteousness is of the Lord. But whatever I do will prosper, for I'm like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. I am delivered from the evils of this present world, for it is the will of God. No evil will befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. For you have given your angels charge over me, Father, and they keep me in all my ways, and in my pathway is life, and there is no death. I am a doer of the word of God, and I am blessed in my deeds. I am happy in those things which I do, because I am a doer of the word of God. Now, Father, I take the shield of faith in obedience to your word, and I quench every fiery dart of the wicked one that comes against me. For Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease germ and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ, every tissue of this body functions in the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I am an overcomer. Father, and I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. The devil flees from me, Father, because I resist him in the name of Jesus. And Father, your word is forever settled in heaven. Therefore, I establish your word upon the earth. Great is the peace of my children, for they are taught of the Lord." 
for material needs, confess these three times a day. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed me from poverty. Christ has redeemed me from sickness. Christ has redeemed me from spiritual death. For poverty, Father, you have given me wealth. For sickness, you have given me health. For death, you have given me eternal life. And, Father, it's true unto me according to your word. I delight myself in the Lord, and you give me the desires of my heart. For I have given, and it is given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over do men give unto my bosom. For with what measure I meet, it is measured unto me. I sow bountifully, therefore I reap bountifully. I give cheerfully, and my God hath made all grace abound toward me, that I, having all sufficiency of all things, do abound to every good work. Now, Father, there is no lack, for you have supplied all my need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, and I do not want, because Jesus was made poor, that I through his poverty might have abundance. For he came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, Father, I have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, and I do reign as a king in life by one, Jesus Christ. The Lord hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Praise God. And for wisdom and guidance, confess or pray these three times a day. The Spirit of truth that abides in me, he teaches me all things. He guides me into all truths. Therefore, I confess that I have perfect knowledge of every situation and every circumstance of life that I come up against, for I have the wisdom of God. I feel impressed to share these things with you as I go along on some of these verses that we confess. When you confess the Spirit of truth abides in you and teaches you all things, guides you into all truths, then you release the ability of God to rise up within you. People that are always confessing, I don't know what to do. I never do know what to do. I just don't know what God wants me to do. You shut God off. You release God by quoting His Word and admitting that the Spirit of truth is revealing to you because that's what God's Word says said, I trust in the Lord with all of my heart, and I lean not to my own understanding. No, I don't lean upon my own self and on my own ability, but I lean upon God's ability, for His ability abides within me. In all my ways I acknowledge Him, and He directs my path. God continually directs my path. I confess it daily. He directs my path. The Word of God is a lamp unto my feet. It is a light unto my path. Thank God my pathway is lighted by the Word of God, and it's not only a lamp unto my feet, but it lights the way that I walk. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. The Lord is always perfecting and bringing into manifestation that which concerns me. I let the Word of Christ dwell in me richly in all wisdom. I do follow the Good Shepherd, and I know his voice, and the voice of a stranger I will not follow. Now, the Word says that the sheep know his voice. And if we confess that we don't know the voice of the Lord, or don't know the voice of the Good Shepherd, then we've violated the principles of the Word of God, and we've bound God, are keeping him from revealing to us his wisdom. Jesus has made unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Therefore I confess that I have the wisdom of God, and I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am filled with the knowledge of the Lord's will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I continually confess that, that I am filled with the knowledge of the Lord's will and all spiritual understanding, because that's what the Word tells us in Colossians 1, 9. So we agree with that and release God's ability to reveal in us the wisdom of God. I am a new creation in Christ. I am his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I have the mind of Christ, and the wisdom of God is formed within me. I'm the new creation. I'm his workmanship. Now, God would not create any unworthy workmanship. 
Therefore, I have the mind of Christ, and God's wisdom is continually, daily, becoming available through me as I meditate the Word, as I continually say what God said. For the Word said that His Word will not return unto Him void. I have put off the old man, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of Him that created me. Now, you notice these are all Scripture. That Scripture comes from Colossians 3.10. I am proclaiming what God's Word has said about me. I want you to understand this. This is very vital. Some people have thought, well, all you've got to do is say it. No, no, let's understand where it's coming from. Let's understand that it's available to you today, and it's what God has said concerning you. When you agree with that, you release God's ability to move in your behalf. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but I am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. Scripture reference, Ephesians 1, 17, 18, and Romans 12, 2. We receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation, and uh, we are not conformed to this world because we're being transformed by quoting, speaking, and saying what God said about us, and it will truly renew your mind to the Word of God. For comfort and strength, confess these as often as necessary. I am increasing in the knowledge of God. I am strengthened with all might according to His glorious power. Colossians 1, 10, and 11. Well, you notice that we're saying that we're increasing in God's knowledge and being strengthened with His might. No, we're not saying, as the world would say, well, I'm just so run down, I'm just so no good, I'm so unworthy, and just so dragging along through this earth as a pilgrim. No, no, that's not what God's Word says about us. It says that we're increasing in the knowledge of God. I am delivered from the powers of darkness, and I am translated into the kingdom of the dear Son of God. Colossians 1.13. All right, now you notice he says we are delivered. The Bible said we are delivered, not going to be someday, not someday, by and by in the pie in the sky. We are delivered from the powers of darkness and translated into the kingdom of the dear Son of God. I am born of God, and have world-overcoming faith residing on the inside of me. For greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. 1 John 5, 4 through 5, and 1 John 4, 4. We're born of God. We're born of God. We're born of love, because God is love. For greater is he that's in me. The greater one dwelleth in us. If he's in us, then he'll put us over in life, if we'll walk in his way. So we continually confess that daily, that the greater one is in me. It'll supply spiritual strength and wisdom for you daily. I will do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. Well, if we'll confess that daily, we may not feel like it, we may not look like it, and we may think that we're lying, but that's what Paul said. The, the Holy Spirit impi- inspired Paul to say that. And if we'll follow in the footsteps of what the Holy Spirit inspired You see, that's the reason that Paul could do so many things that other people thought couldn't be done, because he believed that Christ was strengthening him, and he's doing it through Christ's strength, not his own. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The Lord is the strength of my life. Well, isn't that much better than going around and saying, well, I'll tell you, I just feel like I'm I'm just on my last leg. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to make it or not. No. You may feel that way, but don't confess it. Don't speak it. Don't say it. Don't give the devil any place. Confess what the Word said, and the Word said, The joy of the Lord is your strength, and the Lord is the strength of your life. Scripture reference, Nehemiah 8.10 and Psalms 27.1. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keeps my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus, In all things which are good and pure and perfect and lovely and of good report, I think on these things. Well, now you can readily see that if God's peace is going to stay in your heart, you're going to have to turn your mind and your heart and your thought toward the good things of life and not dwell on the bad and the evil and all that's going wrong in the earth. Sure, the devil's doing things in the earth. Sure, there's crime going on every night. Sure, there's banks being robbed. Sure, ain't so-and-so is dying with such and such. But 
Look upon the good things. Dwell upon that which is good. If you're going to have peace of mind, if you're going to have the peace of God dwelling in your heart, don't ignore the bad things. Do something about them by quoting God's Word over them. Yes, pray for Aunt Susie or whoever it is that's sick. And and pray for the, the things that you won't manifest in this earth, in our government. Do something about them in that light, but then don't go to bed and worry about it all night. If you're going to worry about it, no need to pray. And if you're going to pray, no need to worry. So begin to deal with the good things. Think upon that which is good and pure, perfect, lovely, of good report, as Paul said in Philippians 4, 7 through 8. I let no corrupt communication proceed out of my mouth, but that which is good to edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearer. And I grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby I am sealed unto the day of redemption." Ephesians 4:15. Don't let corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Sure, you may want to at times, but speak only that which is edifying, so it'll give grace to the hearer, and you, then you'll not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. I speak the truth of the Word of God in love, and I grow up into the Lord Jesus in all things. Ephesians 4:29 and 30. Speak God's Word in love. Do it in love, and you'll grow up into the Lord Jesus in all things. No man will take me out of his hand, for I have eternal life. John 10:29. I let the peace of God rule in my heart, and I refuse to worry about anything. Colossians 3:15. Now notice, the word said, to let the peace of God rule in your heart. Evidently, you have the ability to let it do that. Now, you can either stop it or let it. You can worry and not let the peace of God rule. But if you make up your mind that God's peace is going to rule, you'll put away worry. That'll stop worry. If you quote God's word and continually dwell on the good, worry will leave. I'll not let the word of God depart from before my eyes, for it is life to me, for I found it, and it is health and healing to all my flesh. Proverbs 4, 21, 22. God is on my side. God is in me now. Who can be against me? He hath given unto me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Therefore, I am a partaker of the divine nature. 2 Corinthians 6, 16, John 10, 10, 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4, and Romans 8, 31. I'm a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak with new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Mark 16:17 through 18. Jesus gave me the authority to use his name, and that which I bind on earth is bound in heaven, that which I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bind the principalities, the powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world. I bind and cast down spiritual wickedness in high places, and render them harmless and ineffective against me in the name of Jesus. Matthew 16:19, John 16:23 through 24, Ephesians 6:12. I am complete in him who is the head of all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. For I am his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that I should walk therein. Colossians 2.10, Ephesians 2.10. God created the universe by the methods which you have just put in motion by the words of your mouth. God released his faith in words. Man is created in the image of God. Therefore, man releases his faith in words. Words are the most important and powerful thing in the universe today. Let me say it again. The word of God, conceived in the human spirit, formed by the tongue, and spoken out of the mouth, becomes creative power that will work for you. If the body of Christ would only grasp the truths and the principles that are taught in this book and put them in action, they would change this world in 24 hours. Jesus said to me, I have told my people they can have what they say, but my people are saying what they have.